Right now on Stitcher, check out Monatomy from Danny Wallace and Phil Hilton, where men talk openly, frankly, and embarrassingly about their own bodies. Available now, wherever you listen. Hi, Casey. Hi, Danielle. How are you? You're looking fresh-faced this morning. Oh, uh, I'm riding out a, a blowout from like 19 days ago. <laughs> it's like in a mold. You have thick enough hair that like a blowout can like, if I get a blowout the next day, I'm like dripping with hair oil. Like it's not okay. Oh no, that's not you. Well, you look beautiful as well. Uh, I've been up since, well, a few times. It's Sydney Besser's birthday today. Hey, Sydney episode shout out and an episode shout to out. our queen. Are <laughs> the queen of the day and the year and the Nile. I mean, she has been at, like she woke up at one a.m. being like, "It's my birthday!" Oh, my. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, it's like Ramona's goddamn birthday. It lasts for fucking ever. Now, I, I've said it before, but Sydney does have some similarities with Ramona. Fifty <laughs> <laughs> girlfriends she wants at her party and could get and yes. could rope in. Yes. Oh, she could get them all. She could get 50 girlfriends in, in in a minute. No sweat. She's super conservative. Yes. Huge fake tits. <laughs> Huge daughter. fake tits. Bringing home younger guys. All the time. Yeah. They're very similar. Sometimes I call, I'm like, Sydney. I mean, Ramona. I mean, Sydney. Exactly. But I do feel Sydney, and tell me more, but I can very much see Ramona's birthday style of one month could mirror Sydney's. And again, this is a child in Ramona. Well, they're similar. Similar in that, like, Ramona is has, like, a ch- like a seven-year-old child's sensibilities and narcissism. Um, Sydney is a lot funnier and sweeter and affectionate. Uh, of course. It's definitely been going on. She's like, it's my birthday week. And it's like, you don't get a birthday mm. week. You get... You get a day. You get a day. And then you get, like, the day of the party and the day of the the actual birthday. You know what I mean? It's like... yeah. But it's just been going on since like 5 a.m. Like, no, 1 a.m. she woke up and she was like, it's my birthday. And then I was like, go back to sleep. And then 5 a.m. she's like, okay, now it's my birthday. But she's not wrong, though. She's trying to maximize that day, you know. But at least she's like confined it to this day. And like, even in a pandemic, Ramona is like, oh, she's like, "Mm, for little old me. And so she's like, I'm going to have a quiet year. And she's like clearly having like 20 parties at (laughs) Mar-a-Lago. It's insanity. We'll get into Ramona. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's where I'm coming off of, um, where I'm just like a little shell shocked. And I then I have to like drive to her summer camp and bring neatly wrapped. Like I can't bring like anything fresh because that's where we're going to get COVID from fresh cupcakes. I'm sure. Not that I was going to bake a cupcake. No, don't God, get me no. wrong. But everything has to be individually wrapped. So I am going to bring some hostess cup, the, the gourmet hostess uh, ding dong cupcakes <laughs> to her camp. That's what everyone prefers. Yeah, and people don't want something fresh from my fucking oven. They want it from, like, plastic to taste like garbage. That's what they want in their garbage food. Yes, it's not farm to table. I want literally, like, plastic to mouth. Me too, and I didn't even, I was like, do I do Little Debbie? And I'm like, no, too nice. That's right. Too gourmet. I want to do a step down. I want, like, Hydrox. (laughs) I literally want the kids to be like, is this plastic in my mouth that tastes so good? That's what I want. I want them to be like, this is made of no nutrients. This is not a food source. And we were driving and we passed Taco Bell. And I just said a lot. I was like, oh, I haven't been Taco Bell in so long. With like longing. I haven't had Taco Bell in a in a dog's age. Like I am. I love uh, Me Taco too. Bell. And it goes right. And it goes right out of you. It's almost like you didn't eat it. And Danielle, I don't like talking about this. Oh, because it's poop? I knew, but we're talking about a place I like to patron. And visit for my meals. I, no, I don't. Okay, but can I just say? We all know <laughs> that you're going to say what everyone's thinking. I, I'm saying it's like no ca- caloric intake. I'm saying it's good for you in that it doesn't stick to your bones. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's good for all of us. And I was thinking the other day, again, I know you always say I do this, which is I'm like, I don't want to hear about this, but then I launch in. But, you know, a lot of people... Maybe they just found the podcast or they haven't heard back to the very beginning. But I remember when I was like, I guess I'm just going to sell myself and my dignity is gone based on this podcast. Yes. was when I did tell Mm -hmm. the story of a nurse for hire. I had to come over and give me an enema. 
Yes. <laughs> That's when it, it all went out the window. When my feces got so compact and it was half in and half out of my butt. <laughs> and I remember telling that gorgeous story and thinking like, oh, <laughs> we've crossed a line in the sand. That I thought I'd never crossed. Well, I'm surprised you didn't put it in your New York Times yeah. bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, someone was like, no, are there some, someone was interviewing me and they're like, were there some like, Kind of what they're thinking is like darker family stories you didn't tell. And I'm like, obviously there are some, but that one. <laughs> yeah, you really were like, you know what? I'm going to still stay on the classy edge of things and not put, I don't want this for like the, the readers, the, the literati. I don't want that. See. Not at all. Mm. Mm -mm. So th you saved that for the, the less classy version of your book, which is this podcast. Oh, right. Well, this is the like where you, I work material out that fails. <laughs> this podcast goes right through you, really. When you think about it. Oh, real quick. Does not stick to your bones. It is Taco Bell of podcast. This is the Taco Bell of podcasts. Like that, and then it runs right through you. And the next thing you know, you're like, you never want to go back there again. But then you forget. You forget. And you come back a week later and you're like, I'm going to try this again. Maybe it wasn't what I thought. Just the cinnamon chips. <laughs> I'm just going to have the light version. Maybe I won't even listen to the whole thing. Maybe I'll just listen to the Real Housewives part. No, I find myself listening to the whole thing. And then afterwards, you feel so sick to your stomach and you got a DM <laughs> us. <laughs> and I like the cycle. Let's not break it ever. I love the cycle, but I want to talk about your book real quick because we had a sighting this week. Again, Z-Way. God bless Z-Way. <laughs> Z-Way. Someone said, I'm loving this narrative that is emerging of Z-Way. It's part publicist. It's part kind of guru. It's yes. part friend. It, there's a lot of elements to it. Yes. Part just eagle-eyed viewer. Yeah, it's just someone uh, standing on top of the world, looking down on the humanity and finding little spots that we need. Little to gems focus. and things yes. I've overlooked as for PR for my book. And we had a big one this week. Big, big one. You know, I will say, so, uh, you know, Drew Barrymore beautifully posted a video about the book and, and that felt very big and, and, and Jennifer Garner beautifully posted something. So I really feel I've had icons, my icons, you know? Yes, you have. Received letters from Susan Sarandon, you know, whom I love and, and, and who you for. worked for. She yeah. was so gracious and lovely. Considering I wrote something about her workspace and I didn't tell her. And, <laughs> and then I received a letter from my true icon of all time. My favorite actress, as you know her to be Danielle of yes. all time. And that's Deborah Winger. Yes. I guess I wasn't still searching for Deborah Winger. No, you weren't. But documentary plug. But then Danielle, the way spotted. Mm hmm a little old picture. And it was actually, it was actually so subtle in its, in its um, promotion. Yes, it was. It wasn't necessarily a promotion. It was more just her living her life with you in it. And that is the original working girl herself, Miss Melanie oh, Griffin, wow. on a super yacht in Capri, or Capri, however you want to say it. She was there on the yacht reading my book, mm -hmm. looking gorgeous. Gore, I mean, stunning. And then, so Z-Way spotted, Z spotted yep. that they tagged your book, they, hashtag Casey Wilson, hashtag the wreckage of my presence. Look, yeah, it wasn't a complete, like, direct, you know, come back to me. And it was a hashtag Casey Wilson, but I'll fucking take what I get. And then Ms. Melanie Griffith, when I thanked her, wrote right on back on my, on my Instagram. It's for all to see. And it just feels so good, you know? Yeah, that felt She's huge. got, as you said, a head for business. And a bod for sin. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and she really does in terms of this book too, you know, oh, that's her real head for business and her body was in the photo. You know, I really got the best of her. You really did. And speaking of gorgeous women on boats, uh -oh. I would like to tout a new little show on HBO Max called oh. The White Lotus. Oh. Guys. If you're watching The White Lotus, you turn off this podcast now and turn it on. It is so good. It's Mike White, who I'm a huge fan of. Mike White, there is no better <sighs> filmmaker, director, storyteller than Mike White in terms of satire. He is looking at our garbagey human existence mm. and serving it up. And yes, maybe we should write reviews. Uh, I have to say, oh. he, I mean, I loved Enlightened. I love Must Love. You're the joke. Molly Shannon <sighs> is his muse. He's just incredible. Beautiful. Beautiful. So fucking funny. And this show, I mean, uh, just stars everywhere you look. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorites, Jennifer Coolidge, gives a performance. And getting the role she's been due. Ugh. In the same way you watch Schitt's Creek and you're like, 
you know, some people are like, who's got their own hair? I love her. But most people are like, finally, we get to see this crown jewel do what she can do. And this is the same for Jennifer Coolidge. It is about rich white people who go to a resort in Hawaii and just about the entitlement that comes with that and the staff that's working for them. And it is funny as fuck oh, and so dark. So dark. Steve Zahn is Steve doing- Zahn is oh. incredible. Connie Britton, Alexandra Daddario. And Natasha Rothwell. I mean, just incredible. Natasha Rothwell is- What's going on between her and Jennifer Coolidge <gasps> in that show is next level. I want to see just a show with them. Even, like, you know, I, and Murray Bartlett, who runs the place, is, is giving me Tim Curry clue vibes. It's so fucking good. Guys. You will cry laughing. The scene on the boat this week. I Because <laughs> you know this like from line one, but yeah. Jennifer Coolidge is spreading her mom's ashes. And my friend Meg Allen called and she's like, listen, I recommended it to her. And she's like, I have to tell you. Once I say this to you, you will never unsee it. And okay. this this involves housewives. She's like, Jennifer Coolidge's character in White Lotus is Sonia Morgan. Yes! <gasps> it is her put to screen. <sighs> like a, a complex, like beautiful rendering of her, you know? Yes. When Jennifer Coolidge is on the boat spreading her, her mother's oh. ashes and they're in a plastic baggie. And when I know this has to be Jennifer's improv, but maybe it was my way. I don't know. But she opens the little baggie, puts her whole face in and goes, bye, mommy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's guys, too good. It's so good. I really need everybody to get eyes on this show. It's like a high end house on. It is, but it's so well acted and and just. And Molly Shannon's joining us next week. We haven't seen her in it yet. I mean, we haven't even gotten to Molly Shannon yet, and it's amazing. Those two like teenage girls, Connie oh. Britton's daughter. Connie Britton, <laughs> I swear. Pushing around the furniture in the hotel room. The pregnant woman. <laughs> oh, she's a star. Star. <laughs> star. It's just star, 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 star. And there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I've never seen that person before, but they're a star. Yeah. David and I have been howling. We're howling. truly howling. And we're like, oh, the people they're making fun of? Are me. I, I want to be the people they're making. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. We're going to Hawaii and I'm like, okay, heading to be in White Lotus. Yeah. Sad. Very sad. That's all I want. That's all I want in my dreams. I want to be on White Lotus in real yeah. life and in and as a performer. I don't ever want a TN. That's my problem with White Lotus is I'm like, it's a limited series. And You know, Mike White, I've been trying to get at him for years to the point of close to stalking. I tried to sit down with his producing partner, then couldn't find the restaurant. It was like half an hour late and sweaty. And like, oh, Mike White, project. <laughs> and then, I mean, he's just the greatest. I mean, Mike White and his father, Danielle, if you'll recall, we're on Survivor. I mean, just, he's tackled all areas of this world. And I'm such a fan of his. I'm such an absolute fan of his. He's such a genius. Enlightened was one of my favorite shows there's ever been. I mean, he wrote School of Rock. He's just so, <sighs> oh, he's the best. Like, Danielle, I feel like we could be like, maybe like concierge at the White Lotus. <gasps> you know, like we could be something there what that maybe people do. walk by and we just what say like, have fun do. on the boat tonight. Yes. Or I could be a waitress. I mean, I've had so much experience. Mike, just put me in the way. A little something. A little, throw it our way, Mike. We'd love to have it. Yeah, on the pod. Tit for tat. We could Honestly, I feel like we might have better luck getting in one of his projects than him. And we've campaigned for people in the past, but I'm ready to go full throttle here. <laughs> really Please, really. You all have so many connections to people. I know. Who knows Mike White? Come on, someone knows him. <laughs> we just love to just, I don't know. Um, and then there's another person that I'm really into right now that has since passed. So I think that that is done. But I just finished. Well, you know, I think we can have connections to anyone, Danielle. Oh, yes, you're right. I was just going to say that Mike, Nich I just read the Mike Nichols book. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, don't sleep on this one either. Speaking of things that to read at our age and entitled white men. Go on, yes. Danielle. <laughs> I mean, just a story, but he has worked with everyone, including our dear Melanie Griffith. I mean, he just, and the person who wrote the book is this guy, Mark Harris, who is an amazing writer and has written another, uh, other books that I've loved. And he is also just incredible. He's actually married to Tony Kushner. I mean, talk about a I power mean, couple. Yep. That's another book. Everyone, again, <laughs> this is not the content you are coming here for, but this is where I'm at right now. It's two mics. Two white mics. <laughs> Two I'm... white mics and a white lotus. Yes. It's just, guys. You know, honestly, that was one of the greatest books I ever read. 
on the back of the book, like Tina Fey does a quote and it's so perfect. She's like, this is some high end gossip. Yes. That book. And hearing about, I mean, I didn't, Mike, uh, Mike Nichols retooled Annie. Like he had his hand in like every cultural phenomenon. Who knew Annie was a Mike Nichols production? Who knew that? Someone reported, oh God, it wasn't, it wasn't Meryl Streep. It was someone, some actress had worked with him and mm-hmm. said that she was having trouble crying in a scene, whatever it was, and that he was directing. He just walked over and put his hand on her head, like a fatherly touch. Yes. And then that's all he needed to do. And I was like, with love to all the comedy directors I've worked with. They're just like, <laughs> and I'm like out there on my own. And I had a scene to do in the show I just filmed over the pandemic. And I did have to cry. And I employed Mike. I was just like, I'm going to simply imagine Mike Nichols coming over and touching me on the head. And I believe I got somewhere. And then I decided, Danielle, in all my spiritual journeys and work, I am told by the sources I seek out just to find what I want to find, that you can bring those who have passed, including famous people you didn't know, onto your own team of life. What? So I have now been praying to Mike Nichols. (laughs) <laughs> he didn't want to work with me on this mortal plane. But in the other plane, he mm. is directing us. You know, it's He's so funny me. because I, too, read a passage that I screen grabbed from the book where they were like, um, he was a father to so many, like Natalie Portman. Like Natalie Portman literally said, like, he's the only man that I – director that I've worked with that hasn't, like, had, like, an icky feeling. Like, he truly was, like, a father figure. And I started crying, and I was like, I want Mike Nichols to be my dad. <laughs> I just was like, I need him to guide me, not even as an actress. Right. As it's a person. beyond that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I would love to call him to my team if I could. Honestly, I'm just saying, like, just because people have passed and you have no connection to them, like, you're not their kids. <laughs> and I'm happy to give him, a, like, a an ethereal 10%. <laughs> like, you know, like, yes. I'm happy. <laughs> yes. Honestly, he might be working more than others. Man, I'm just going to say. On my I'm team. Happy on to- my team down here. On my team. I have a team down here, but I also have a light team down up there. And he is my dead agent. <laughs> And producer. Honestly, well, I have another dead agent celeb. As you know, I think I was on an airplane, drunk, watch, reading uh, Wishful Drinking, Carrie Fisher's yes. biography, and turning, you know, looking inward. And I thought, you know what? I, I'm going to also call upon Carrie up there. Now, again, she has a <sighs> lovely daughter and, and people you'd think would be her first stop in terms of just like organizing and yeah. helping from above. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. You know, she had sure. a very full life. But I'm like, if she has any time. But I, I do think it's like your agent. It's like they have bigger clients than you, but they can still touch down they can on still you. Make a call. Yeah. Absolutely and right, Danielle. still do, make calls for you. I urge you all to just like pick a celeb that you'd like their help. <laughs> oh, Danielle. Well, I think we should take a break and yes. bring on a guest of all guests. Yes. Really, a, 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 a comedian and a voice. If you want to eat healthier, please lend me your ears. This is the hands down easiest way. Cassava is a drink that has been called the cleanest, most nutrient dense meal imaginable. Cassava is loaded with over 70 superfoods and ingredients. We're talking maca root, chia seeds, saka inchi, kamu kamu, kai berry, acai, coconut. These are all the things we know we need in our, in our food, but I'm struggling to pronounce them. And I want them, but I don't know how to get them. You have to check out the entire ingredient list yourself. It is so impressive. The team over at Cashava have spent the last decade obsessing and perfecting this one product. And you can really tell. You get all the best stuff in one shake. And it can be used as a full meal by yourself to fuel up your day. Now, I myself was gifted two bags of cassava. They are gone. I blew through them. My husband and I are fighting over them at the old blender. It's so good. I- I'm saying this with such purity of heart. It's so hard to find a shake that's just simply good, not to mention has all of these incredible nutritious ingredients for you. You get all the best stuff in one shake and it can be a full meal of itself, which I love. Cassava started this in the jungle on the side of a mountain during a health retreat. Where else? That's where I start all my great ideas. And now it's blowing up into a completely huge craze. I know so many people doing it. Their mission is to bring together the world's best superfoods into a single ready-to-go meal to help busy people stay healthy on the go. Try it yourself. Kashava is offering 10% off for our listeners. Go to kashava.com slash BS to get 10% off your order. That's 10% off at kashava, 
K-A-C-H-A-V-A dot com slash B-S. Getting your nails done used to be a hassle. Try to do them in yourself and they look like they've been painted by a five-year-old. I actually had my five-year-old paint my nails over the pandemic because I was so desperate. And this was, of course, before I got my hot little hands and now my amazing manis on the most incredible system for nails called the Olive and June Manny System. It is the answer to salon perfect nails at home with polishes that last over seven days and they do not chip. I'm telling you, they do not chip. When I do my nails myself with, you know, whatever brands I pick up, I'm going three and a half days top. Trips to the salon, as we know, are expensive. It's time consuming to get hither and thither. And it's also, I think we're all finding now there's more to be done at home. The Olive and June Manny system is only five steps and it comes with all the tools you need in one gorgeous box. It felt like Christmas. Now I'm going to say something. My girlfriend, Sarah Gibson Tuttle, is the creator and founder and CEO of Olive and June but I loved this product before I even met her. And so I'm so excited to be talking about Olive and June Manny System. Sarah's created, truly, it's one of the greatest products of all time. They are the secret behind Salon Perfect Nails. They have Poppy, which is a patented brush handle that makes it easy to paint with both of your hands. That's the secret. We all just don't know how to do it with our other hand. The polish is shiny. It lasts at least a week. It doesn't chip. Everyone will think you're wearing gel nails. And the Manny System also has six polishes. And it breaks down to about $2 per Manny. Your new nail life is here, okay? Get 20% off your first Manny system when you use the promo code HOUSEWIVES at oliveandjune.com. That's the code HOUSEWIVES at oliveandjune.com. You can also follow Sarah Gibson Tuttles. This is my own shout out for her. She has such cute videos of how to do your nails, links, colors, everything you want to see. She's living that aspirational life, let me tell you. I love her dearly and I love, I love Olive and June. So use the code housewives at oliveandjune.com. Say goodbye to expensive bad manis. This is the new you. It just is. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Now, this gentleman, mm. when he came on, I so embarrassingly said that I was attracted to him immediately to his face, mm. looked in his eyes and said, I didn't even say hi. I didn't even say because we haven't met in the flesh. I just said, I'm very attracted to you, <laughs> which is embarrassing. And I was embarrassed for you because I was like, wow, to just speak so baldly and look into someone's eyes. No, I know. It's real weird. That's a lot. I, I said that to my friend, Nicole Shabtay's husband, Doug Mand. That's even worse. No, it was worse. <laughs> but I also feel the same about Matt. So I'm, I'm so fine to say that. Guys, we have a guest here. His name is Matt Rogers. He is an actor. He's a writer. He's a host. He is known for a game show spelled G-A-Y-M-E. Thank you for that. Shrill. He's the hilarious host of Hot Dog, H-A-U-T. He's also the co-host of Los Culturistas podcast with Bowen Yang. This is going to be a voice of our generation. Then is a voice of our gen- a young, not our generation, Danielle. It's the later. generation two below. Two below. One below for me, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> Two for you, one for me. You're still riding that millennial boat into the sun, aren't you? Someone has to be the last one. It, it, it's <laughs> me. And you guys are so mad about that. It's like, I'm sorry that I'm with them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is so upsetting. It's like my, you know, okay. Someone has to be last. Okay. You're the last millennial? Is that what you are? Yes. Like the last unicorn? <laughs> I absolutely am. I'm two months away from the last, from the final last millennial. And people are so fucking jealous of that. You're a millennial um, adjacent. People I'm looking at right now. Yeah. <laughs> and our guest is nodding in understanding of my position. It's like, I didn't decide when to be born. I didn't decide to straddle two generations and be the voice of both. I don't want that. Please welcome the gorgeous and lovely Matt Rogers. Hi, everyone. It's so true. We need someone to sort of generationally open the door and keep it open and lead us through. Mm. And that should be you. It's always been you. It's always been. I'm saying, and also, I just want to say, in terms of comments on appearance, that's what we need. We need people who are going to say what they feel. That's how we Thank get you. good Housewives episode. That's how we get good podcast episodes. I mean, this is... Thank you. If you have an instinct, you say it. Thank you. And do you have an instinct on Danielle and I's drab gray t-shirts that we've come to you with? <laughs> I think you guys look stunning and aspirational as always. Thank I mean, you. I, I, you have to understand, for me, the only worthwhile discourse is the Housewives discourse. Yes. And so to be sort of at the Olympics of that discourse, wow. to sort of be topical for a second. <laughs> um, 
you know, just to sort of like let time stamp it for the for the listeners out there. Um, it's huge, and I'm so happy to be here because this is our Olympics right now. We've got Potomac on, yeah. We've got New York. We've got Beverly Hills, and and I'm not watching the real Olympics. I saw not someone swim across one lane. It and- was, it's too hard for me to watch the Olympics this year because now all I have is Peacock. Like I don't even have terrestrial television, if you will. No. So to figure it the fuck out is too hard. For me. Also, honestly, we all have to just say it. It's on very late because yes. they're happening in Tokyo. So you sort of wake up in the morning and you, and yep. you hear yeah. what's gone down. You hear Piers Morgan's rant on oh, God. God. Did he weigh in on the Simone of it all? Of course he did. Of course oh, he did, Matt. No. And that, see, that's what I'm saying. It's so early for this. He's the worst. I said, like, when, when that happened, I could hear or like all like my parents' generation being like, you know, when I was when I was watching the Olympics, the athletes were tough. Yeah. You know, you can just hear it. And it's like, did you guys watch the Larry Nasser documentary? Yes. That was, it, was, it was so. So one of the things that struck me about it was they talked about the Carrie Strug moment where she like, you know, at the time, like heroically did that vault. And then they were able to place first and win the gold. And she had like truly like a broken leg or something. Yes, I remember. And I was like. The way where they've always framed that to us is like it was this insane like triumph over injury and adversity. Meanwhile, no, that was like very, very, very negligent of them to have her do that. And yes, it was like inspiring and everything, but also like at what cost? And I just watched a documentary that was about like truly like how depressed these athletes get like during and after their training and after the Olympics. And it's like, how about we think of these people as human beings before machines for just one second? Just one given all that they have gone through and they've really like turned over their lives to this sport. And also, you know, Danielle and I, I do identify with them in the way that we've drilled down on housewives, you know, yes. given over. It's a sport. It, it's a sport. It, it is. And, and we are, I guess the commentators or maybe yeah. the athletes. I'd like to also think of myself as an athlete in right. the housewives Olympics. This is a muscle you have to exercise. Uh, you can't just let it go. Yeah, no, because here's the thing, like there's seasons that are like sort of like when Dallas is on, it's sort of like that's like your resting period. Yeah. That's like when we're stretching. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're stretching, getting an off ready. Season, it's like, but still keep it's it up. an off season. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Still keep it up and we'll always keep up. And I want to tell you, I do want to get into the candle of it all with Wendy. But I just two days ago, because I Googled Wendy Osefo candle and found nothing. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I'm re-upping on my Tiffany Moon candle. <gasps> So I ordered six more of those. No. Yeah. I'm I'm here to buy Housewives shit. Oh, I, Casey and I just went online and bought Sonia Morgan things. Now, a bunch of Sonia Morgan. And may I tell uh, you, it's a terrific price point. I'm just I'm sure it, it better there. be. It's like, I got a sequin gown with a slit up to the crotch for $75. Yeah. I got a huge red evening gown for like $125 now. Evening gown? Evening gown. Right. Now, is this bargain basement literally her basement? I believe that they took the twenty Century 21 stock. It's in that terrible, sad little basement in her townhome yeah. where all the like trash I feel like is. she took like a bellhop's you know the thing they pushed the baggage on from like the Ritz and ran it over to her townhouse and was just like pile it in yeah get it on there get it on there things were falling off there's an intern downstairs in the basement and then a bell rings it's like in Ghostbusters when it's like we gotta call like when we order something (laughs) from Sonia from upstairs rings a bell and is like we have an order and then an intern is just like folds it into a bag and when I tell you that that thing was on its way in two seconds flat. Unlike the next Robin's morning, hat. Matt, you would not expect it. It said they I out. ordered it at four p.m. nine a.m. the next morning. It said your item from Sonia Morgan has shipped, and I got a lovely letter from a gal named Regina. And I would like to speak for Dr. Tiffany Moon and say that I received an email very quickly after because uh, they said like you know it could be three to four days. A day and a half later, it said your Dr. Tiffany Moon candles are on their way. And I ordered different flavors this time because the first time I got like ketamine because I'm gay and like Mm -hmm. a a, a Mm -hmm. malzapram or whatever. This time I branched out, so I'm getting a whole new one. So I'll let you guys know what I think. And what did you think of what you did receive? I loved them. Really? Yeah, because you're just going back, even for hot size products, and paying again, unless you genuinely sounds like you loved it. No, no, no. And I'm going back. And this is not hashtag ad. No, 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 no. It's not hashtag ad at all. I would never. Um, <laughs> unless but, they paid you well. 
unless they paid me well and we are doing i am doing the summer campaign for bonobos so just so, <laughs> so you know you i'm not opposed i'm not opposed i can be bought bonobos. <laughs> i absolutely can be bought and i would like everyone that that listens to this podcast to know that <laughs> the thing is about these candles is I wish I had one with me so I could read it to you, but so they're all like they're named after different drugs because that's her whole thing. She's like, you know, just... she's an anesthesiologist extraordinaire. And it's like, it's like, um, it's like ketamine and it's like uses like for like chilling after a hot, uh, after a hot summer day or like, you know, like for relaxing after your stressful uh, cousin like said something crazy about QAnon. And that's written on the box or on the candle. Like as if it were like FDA, like <gasps> oh, you know, like, like, oh, um, like directions. Wow. Yes, and so uh, it's kind of clever. And I can imagine her sort of walking into her team of writers and being like, "Okay, guys, like, what do we have?" And like they were like, "Okay, so her we team thought... of writers, meaning her two twin daughters." <laughs> yeah, right. I, <laughs> I think I I hope they wrote it. I mean, I'm I'm assuming they're brilliant girls. Yeah, they are. But but they are like cleverly put together. And I was like, this gives this product an edge. So when Karen's looking at Wendy's candle and saying, oh, Wendy, like this is classy. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's a nice looking candle. But two questions. What's the edge? What makes you want to buy it? And two, why isn't it available on this day? Because no. I don't know if I'll Google Wendy Osefo candle again no. like I did the no. other night. You've got one Google and then we need a frictionless experience. One. You've got one window. But for her to not have that candle out when that episode aired is unforgivable. Unforgivable. It really I is. Like, Maybe she'll line it up with like a launch on the show. I'm assuming there's a plan. No, but the window has already been missed. Like, I agree. The window's gone. Wendy. Yeah. Wow. I felt like she spent more time on the gift bag and that little puff of tissue than she was a lot of shit did on the candle. Before you got to the candle. Yeah, it's like here's what I'll put the candle in, and she like ran to paper source. Yeah, which I appreciate. I did. You gotta, too. you know, you gotta, mm. you gotta sell it with the look. So. Karen did really make me laugh because she was just like, "What separates your candle from other candles?" And um, she was like, "Wendy was like, these are hard questions." Okay, Wendy was like, "I got a paragraph," and it's like, "What is that paragraph, Wendy?" <laughs> Yeah, I, I would like to hear the paragraph for sure. The paragraph, the paragraph business plan. And also, the, I, I just like when she's when she asked that one simple question of what sets your candle apart. And Wendy came in like, Karen, I'm so excited. I would like to be the Black Martha Stewart. Here's what I'd like to do. And then she asked her one question about what sets your candle apart. And Wendy sank into the couch and said, I'm afraid of this question. And it's like. <laughs> Martha Stewart. I mean, Martha Stewart is ready to go to the front lines for her product. That's right. I mean, Danielle, you said it last week, but I do think it bears repeating. Like, you don't see too much a woman accomplished as she is in so many fields being like, I think I'd actually like to downgrade and go into candles. It's like, it's just not something we were used to every day. When someone has a PhD and is teaching at a reputable, like, fancy university, for them to down shift because it doesn't seem like she's like so passionate about it well nothing about her has this here's the thing and she is a brilliant person and i really appreciate wendy and i i actually am a wendy fan and i know it's been a rocky start <laughs> but here's the thing about having a home essentials line if you're gonna have a home essentials line I should think of you, and in some place in my brain, I should th also think, yeah, Home Essentials. I don't think of Wendy Osefo no. and think Home Essentials line. So already it's like, I mean, with Karen, it's like, you get it. There's like yeah. a brand there. There's like a defined... La Dame perfume is... like you. We all call her La Dame now. Like Coach it Robins is, is so right. These are things that yes. connect and make sense to us. Robin, ha baseball hats. Yes. Kathy Wakili, sure. cannolis. I don't know if anyone <laughs> Remembers Kathy Achilles. I got it. I understand yes. that, but that made sense. Iconically, Bethany Frankel is skinny girl. I mean, like I just don't, and I I wonder if like Wendy. I just think we don't, and especially when she's in the middle of a sort of brand revolution. Yeah, you know what I mean. She's in this sort of like moment of change, transformation, revolutionize herself. And I think yes. that's great, but maybe we should wait until that's completed and figured out before we decide I'm going yeah. to be a home essential slide. She's sort of mid chrysalis, if you will. You know, she hasn't totally become yes. the butterfly. And we want to wait for the butterfly to see the full transformation. But yeah, like I feel like with Wendy, we could have used a like, here's how you run for office book, or like, here's why the left has a problem book, or, yeah. or just something in that realm. And I know that wouldn't have sold. So it's hard to 
or how to do it all type of like because she is she's kind of like throwing up a briefcase and a pacifier like i did see she is coming out with a book i think that she's co-writing with her mother it's called like tears of my mother like and it's it's like which I, again, like that title, like I think we've heard it a million times, like tears of my father, like struggle of my mother. Like it's like, I get, I get what we're going for here, but we've heard the title, but there is a book coming that's like specific to her and her mother's like journey and like um how okay. they've gotten as far as they've gotten because they're incredibly impressive yes. people. I mean, like, I, but I just don't think candle. I mean, to sell that journey, I, I get that. Right. But a candle feels very like, wishy-washy and the same even Monique like Monique had her brand which I didn't understand not for lazy moms mm-hmm. I still don't understand to this day if it's like it's okay to be lazy or it's not but and it was yeah. also like essential oils and yeah like, I don't understand it quite what she was selling but I still loved it and felt it was right <laughs> right right because it didn't really make sense but not that at tracked. all not <laughs> at all and she did a lot of live podcast shows which Danielle and I do but I do at least we're up there like trying to sing and dance like it felt like Monique was just like why aren't people watching me sit on a stool do a podcast about right. a product we don't understand she also had a yeah. spread which to me felt expensive we've never had a spread at one of our live podcast shows she, and she had gift bags for everybody like just feels her overhead throwing money in all the wrong ways but that that also is right I will say like her having a panic attack about ticket sales, I never felt more seen as like a <laughs> C-list comedian than that. <laughs> Me too. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like, her, yeah. her being like, can I sell out the Regent? You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> like, she, she's like really panicking about whether or not she's going to have enough butts and seats because it would just be humiliating and if not. maybe there'll be a bum rush at the end of the day. Oh. Yeah, you know, people buy tickets the day of. They buy tickets the day of. That's what they do. And it's just like, I don't know, girl. Don't like know, you either girl. sold out right away or not. Okay, like, Let's touch back one more time on Wendy. I don't care for Wendy yeah. as a housewife. I've heard. I've heard. I love guys. I disagree. I feel like she is a perfect housewife this uh, season. In your heart, Danielle, you want to watch Wendy. Yes, I do. I am watching a woman who named her breast Happy Ann Ness. I mm-hmm. am watching her walk down the street with a gorgeous new bottom. I am watching a woman who, That's true. That who is, true. is a political commentator and a... That wants to be seen as a sex symbol. That wants to be seen as a sex symbol and now has a candle line. What are you talking about? You don't want to watch her. I'm sorry. She's unbelievably watchable. I would agree that Wendy is a great housewife. I thought she had a great first season. I will say I will agree with you, Casey, you, that Matt. I think I think that the second season is, and I hate to use this word, thirsty. It's really thirsty, you, and you can you can really sort of. Uh, confirm at this point that it's it's about being on the show. I'm likening her to Leah in some ways right but now. But this is, you guys, when you've had a terrific first season, when you've had a stellar first movie. She had an okay first season. She had a great first season. I thought she had a good first season. Sequels are hard. We all know Well, you, as the writer of Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2, Danielle, who knows more than you that (laughs) sequels are hard? Sequels are hard. Please... (laughs) As you have such you, empathy for second season outside. I do. I do because I know what it's like to write Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. Look at the blank page and think, now what are the dogs going to do? Yeah, where do they go from here? I know what Poppy and Chloe did the first season, and it was gold. How am I going to match it? And I understand mm. the point of view that Wendy and Leah are coming in with. What they're being confronted with. Yeah, because it's hard to do to do it again and do it better. I think that Wendy is doing it. No, I don't think she's doing it better. I here's what I think. I think that Wendy came in and when she had her new titties, which look incredible, incredible. by the way, there's no like glow bouncing off them. I'm like, is someone holding a bounce board in front of them? I was just like, they're oiled up and gorgeous. Yeah, and there's for sure there's some sort of ointment on there. I mean, she is she is really on display in a gorgeous way, and I think she looks phenomenal. And whoever did her did the work for her should Beautiful. be commended. Wonderful, and deserves accolade. Or she, the doctor. Yeah, or she, I mean, whoever whoever did this. But well, I guess we actually saw him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but accolades are deserved. I just think she didn't realize she already was doing enough to be watchable this season by having her body transformation, by having the nude interlude party and having the little cupcakes with the titties, and just by hosting that event that sets the stage for Giselle and Karen and like maybe sort of like having weird alignments, she would have been fine. What's bothering me mm. is the thirstiness 
with which she's coming from Mia because it's not earned and it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's, weird. it's giving something away about Wendy that I didn't want to know about her. No. She's got that anger towards a new woman. And that happens a lot actually with second season housewives is that you know they've been kind of embraced or they've had a hard time and then when they see the next class coming up they don't like it they get shook i didn't like the new field hockey girls showing up on there and junior you know i don't like never it. liked the new field hockey girls oh, see, never liked i them. always knew you keep your friends close you keep your enemies closer that new girl to me take her under the goddamn wing make her stay that's close what Karen does she, that's what ramona that's does that's what vicky does that's what all the greats do the greats yeah. know Keep them close. Don't pull a Shannon Bedore who gets challenged and nervous. You got to bring them into you. Keep them on your side because you're going to use them eventually. It's just it's she's not playing it correctly because the thing is, if she really were to watch Mia, Mia is going to have a rough first season because Mia is going to hang herself because I think that Mia already has shown weird alliances like the weird thing about her being because i don't think she was honest about her age which i think is going to bite her in the ass i don't think that she was honest about her former occupation which i think is gonna they're not gonna let go had she watched this show at all she should know this. she should just come in and if she was like some sort of like escort that worked at a at a nice place like she should have just been honest about that but we have her coming in and saying i was a bartender no actually i was a stripper no actually i never took my clothes off no actually it was at a five star restaurant i was in a ball gown and i was in a ball gown i was like okay so if you're going to say i was a stripper understand that the word stripper sort of denotes the removal of clothing. So for you then to c- turn around and say, but I was in a ball gown at all times. I was like, this doesn't really make sense. And you said you were a bartender. Like, what is the actual It team? was as convoluted as Erica explaining Tom's ejection from the vehicle, but in a Pasadena <laughs> backwards. That's face. But, That's but, face. But, but can I respectfully disagree with you, Matt? I think it's hard information to unfurl to housewives. And I think she... the oh, okay for just being like, yeah, this is what I was. Whereas with a lot of the other houses, we have to dig and dig and now they're too deep into the lie to even even acknowledge that they weren't just a bartender. I I like Mia. I, I felt for her when she was crying about not having her dad in her life. And I'm like, to me, it's yeah. quite clear how we got here. And to, to yeah. I'm not saying you're judging her, but for Wendy and the other women to put her down, I'm just kind of like, I feel like she's just trying to come clean, but she knows the full story it might not be totally accepted, but I'm like, right. I accept the full story and I'm okay with it, Mia. I That's why I feel she should lean into it because we've all seen, yeah. again, housewife's history. We can't forget the history. Otherwise, we're doomed to repeat it, which is like housewife's history. They're all so judgmental towards strippers. So even though uh, who's better? Like, we're all strippers at this yes. fucking, you know what I right. mean? And we're like talking yeah. about the housewives. Like, we're not wearing ball gowns. Exactly. So I That's just feel like collection. <laughs> she she should lean into it and be like, yeah, I was a stripper. That's what I did. I made money. I I made yeah. good money. I did it. I know. I just get her nerves about it. It's like oh, I it's get a it. tough thing to one hundred percent clean to those women about. Yeah, I don't feel right. like she should have reason to feel bad about it. It's just oh no, I really like Mia. I get. I guess I. I totally understand being nervous to share all that and how it's not necessarily cut and dry. And I do believe there's like complexity in what she's saying, despite the fact that I really don't understand the rubric we're talking about the five star restaurant <laughs> on. Like, are we talking about Yelp? Are you t- are are you exaggerating a Michelin situation? Like, I don't understand that. But I guess what I'm saying is. <laughs> She should know from watching this show, if she has, which I assume she has, that what these women are going to drag her for is the dishonesty and the inconsistency, not what she did in the past. And if she, if, if they're going to drag her for being a stripper, that's on them. And she can be on the right side of history because if Giselle says something fresh about her being a stripper, then Giselle is shitty. But Mia has nothing to like explain or like prove to anyone. She is who she is. And I just think she would have maybe had an easier time had she been a little bit clearer yes. about it yeah. was just because these women love to drag read dishonesty. Although I felt like they kind of let slide her slip about her age, you know, in a way that what I like about Potomac is there's a lot going on. Like even the new girl who came in oddly to, to Ashley's <laughs> double baby, second baby shower, who Ascala. gives her champagne. And then Ashley's like, is it good? Like that yeah. has been a full season on Beverly Hills. And instead yeah. of freezing right past that, the girl's like, yeah, it is. She came to help Robin mail out her hats in yeah. Louboutins and then yep. comes to the del- to invite. That's what I love about the house lives, to invite a friend you don't know to a baby shower of a person. Yeah. It's almost like 
makes no bones about like, this is what it is. Like, I'm going to invite a new friend here. They're like, okay. And then here comes the Scala waltzing in. What do we think of a Scala? Like, what's our first she impression? She doesn't have it. No. Not, it's, it's not right behind the eyes. No. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I don't think she's got like, the, and this sucks, but I don't think she's got like housewife star quality where it's like behind the eyes. Oh. But I would be, I would love to be wrong and like all of a sudden smash to her in a confessional looking insane, like, and her having the light in her eyes and Ascala coming out of nowhere. I would love nothing more. You know, I genuinely felt in the same way, like in New York, when we saw Lou's tech person recording them, I thought that was Ascala's job at the warehouse. Like, I was just like, oh, she's a normal, like, side character that's like, well, all these Me crazy too. ladies. I thought it was like maybe her little cousin or something. Exactly. Or like maybe yes. one of like, well, like Giselle's daughters helping out. She sort of reminded me of Portia's sister, Lauren, who like yeah. goes in and out. She's not Shamia. Shamia, I think, has dark quality. So Cynthia Bailey's sister, yes. Yes, Mel. Mel. Like, or Mal, sorry. But it's like she yeah. in and out. We don't. I, we sort of like don't really register unless she's hiding like the marriage certificate. Like we're just kind of like right. whatever. But she's no Shamia, I would say. She's no like you know, friend of she's, she just seemed sort of ancillary to No, me. I think she's going to be around though, because did yeah. you watch the music video for Candace's drive back? Yeah, no. I did. Okay. So <laughs> let, let's just say, let's give, and I, I, I want to, I want to tell you guys about like kind of a horrifying revelation I had, Go ahead. but Go first ahead. let me say, <laughs> I, I was watching the music video for drive back by Candace, all caps Candace. <laughs> um, and I saw Escala was in the music video along with all the other women. So that makes me feel like, okay, Escala is going to be a fixture in this season because otherwise, why would she be in this music mm. video? But what I want to tell you guys, and this is really crazy. I was actually walking out of my room and I was sort of lost in thought and this crept in. And I don't think I've been so shocked with myself <laughs> since I was 11 years old and I realized I was gay. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I was walking out of my room and I, I, I suddenly... I, it hit me that Candace is my favorite housewife. <laughs> and this is like, this is so at any time I've ever, I'm ever on record about housewives. I'm like, I don't like Candace. I, I even went, went almost as far until I saw the fight and it was like objective. I was like team Monique all the way last yeah. season. And I, then I saw the fight and I was like, okay, well, it's a little bit more black and white than I thought it would be. Um, she was attacked. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like, but with Candace, I'm like, I constantly am laughing. Yeah. I think that she has like these little quirks that she returns to like every time she dabs her yeah, eye with that. the with the corner of a napkin. Yeah. I love that sh I mean like what what is her tagline this season? My blessings are many, but my patience is none. <laughs> her saying her saying at the reunion, she was trespassing. She was an intruder. <laughs> like her vocabulary I love. I love the fact that she's beat to hell like a drag queen this season for no reason. In every scene, there's too much going on. A mother with a handbag over the head, and it's just like that's mommy. <laughs> she survived that. I love that about her. I love the glow up into the new house. I love her and Chris. I love her and Chris. Her her husbander. <laughs> Her husband, I mean, I just love the words she creates. I love that she's trying to do music and acting. I love that, that stupid little scene of her shooting the pilot. And like we saw two, two seconds of a dropped in acting. Honestly, I thought she was great. She was like, what's wrong, honey? Yeah. And she was really asking. Yes. She wanted to know the answer. She didn't know what the answer would be. No, and she, uh, natural. He was listening. Dropped Mike in. Mike Nichols, again, not to bring it back, he would be impressed. He touched her touched on her the head. head. Touched her head. Touched her you head. You can tell. She was touched on the head by Mike Nichols. <laughs> by ghost, metaphorically. The ghost of <laughs> Mike Nichols. The ghost of Mike Nichols touched Candace Dillard Bassett's head. And I I'm just saying, like, I can't believe it because also, like, I'm also ride or die Karen. Like, I love Karen. Oh, I love Karen. And I also think, like, when I, when I saw that scene with Candace and Karen, I thought, oh, I'll be team Karen on this. And I left and I was like, I'm so disappointed in Karen. Wow. Wow. Nah. And it's all leading to me being a Candace stan, and it's wow. hard, and I'm starting the journey today. Matt, wow. You're speaking so passionately. No. I can't help but now I'm like, I agree. This is what I'm passionate about. No, I'm feeling that from you so powerfully. I will say last week I had a similar revelation where I said, you guys, I'm liking Candace. I don't know if I'm, you remember I, that, I, Casey. She's fun. Iris said the word Candace last week, and you guys were like, ugh. But then 
when you started talking about her, you softened. Yeah. You softened. You couldn't help you did. Me, damn it. Look, Can't as you know on the show, it just takes one comment to, to make me see someone entirely differently and embrace them onto my bosom. And I'm 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 feeling that from you and I thank you for that. And I think you're gonna get a lot of people on your side after that gorgeous monologue. And pe- when people are like, she needs to let the Monique thing go, actually watch it again because that was crazy. And also remember that like Monique and her were friends. So I get her still hanging on to it. And she's not really being like, I'm hanging on to the Monique thing. The Monique thing is still my storyline. What her storyline is, is she just wants Karen to acknowledge the fact that what happened to her was real. And she wants, she wants her to be like, I understand why you're upset and I'm sorry. And Karen couldn't give her that. She said to Karen, I don't trust you. And Karen said, I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> it's, just, it's interesting because I do think Candace was provoking Monique when I watched it back. And I do think yeah. Karen, I do think it's okay for a friend to just say, like, I did try to stay neutral with these two women. I like that said, again, everything you're saying is making perfect sense. So I just think, like, and again, if Monique is not on the show, why does Karen need to hang on to a narrative that she's still? Like because Karen right. can't admit she's wrong. Karen has never been able right. to admit she's wrong, and that is her this Achilles' is a character heel. game. You're correct. You're that correct, is true. Danielle. And she has to stay the course. It's interesting to watch old housewives referenced in this, like what's going on with Garcelle and Denise and Lisa. Yeah. Like to, right. to hang on to something. It, it just because we so exist in this vacuum of like these are the only people we know. It's like when they're gone, I kind of like them gone. But they're but they're part of the world, and the world is what's fun. You know they're what I mean? Like the, the, you, That's right. And and we we can't ignore our history, no. our shared history as as the as the Bravo holics and the the ladies of our other aunts that is left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When someone's passed, you don't forget them. They live no. in you. And, they and also, on your these team ladies life. return. That's the thing too. Is like you have to remember some of these narratives when they exist. Some of these women do come back. You know what Ooh. I mean? And so. Hello? And guys, there is talk of Sheree. She by Sheree coming back. Which I back. want I want so badly because Atlanta needs it. Atlanta is a train wreck. And so many of these these franchises, I think, are train wrecks right now. Atlanta is one of them. This was not a good season for Atlanta. And I think we need a back Except to Except for basics. Bolo. Bolo was fun. That episode was great. We can agree. We can ag- oh, amazing. I think we need to take a break. I think we need a second to let the ads wa- wash over us whilst we understand that candace is our new favorite housewife <laughs> it's crazy to think about it, it really were you on drugs winning i'm just I, wondering I, what unlocked it for you it just nearly all, always but like <laughs> it, okay but it just came together and synthesized mm-hmm. for you i can't describe it it was like i was realizing i was gay again like i told yeah. you it's this thing that i can't change i was born this way i yeah. when i was born i was a candace stan and it comes to everyone at different points wow you were born a candace stan I think so. I and I because it because it's made not you something that. I can change. Mm. No, no. In the in the nature versus nurture argument, I'm willing to say. Your first instinct was like, no, 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 no. I, I must to push reject. this away. We reject what we don't understand. We reject what we are. Yeah. And and that's actually why I love Housewives because it is psychological. You know what I yeah. mean? This is it does all track. Yeah. Wow. wow. This is a deep episode. Maybe our deepest ever insight i i didn't think we'd be going this deep and so i'm i'm processing that let's let's take a break and i knew i knew <laughs> back with matt Rogers. <laughs> right now is the perfect time to check out one of article's newest outdoor looks garden terrace the hand-picked series features laid-back elegant designs for outdoor lounging dining and more lunch in the garden yes please Article combines the curation of a boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online. Their team of designers focuses on beautifully crafted pieces, quality materials, and durable construction. Shop them online for a modern aesthetic of mid-century Scandinavian industrial and bohemian designs. The best part? You save up to 30% over traditional retail prices. Article keeps their prices low by cutting out the middlemen and selling directly to you. Fast, affordable shipping is available across the USA and Canada and is free on orders of over $999. I love my article. This summer, I will be out in my article lounger. And it is making me so happy. It goes so well in my new house. And I'm thinking of getting a table from there, too. I want to be outside 
laying on some article all summer long. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Go to article.com slash housewives and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash housewives to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. We're back. I would just like to address something that happened last week. And I think Matt wants to talk to me about it. And I would love to just, I've had a lot, yeah, a lot of DMs and tweets. and I'm sure you did. It was sort of insane. It was. People really came for me. We're very upset. Very upset. Including my husband. Everybody. I can't imagine he was happy. No, I told him about it afterwards. And he was like, what have you done? <laughs> now, Matt. You know, what, tell, tell us your take, because I'm, I'm wondering if I'm said, allowed to say the, the main feedback we've been getting. I said, I don't like men in tank tops. And it was not, I've, I've had pictures. I would also say that I've been sent so many tank top pictures of men of all ages. Like, I just, I've been two-year-olds. I'm getting pictures of uh-huh. two-year-olds in tank tops. <laughs> it's been a shock. Yeah, well, and, and have you hated every single one of them? No, I love them all. <laughs> See, here's the thing. It's like, I don't think you're looking at the right men in tank tops because as a gay man TM in the world, listen, I, I it actually was a long time for me to be able to feel confident in a tank top. But then when you get there, it's so freeing because let me tell you something. It's much more comfortable than wearing a t-shirt in heat. And some people don't want to just pop the whole damn top because, you know, that comes with it, it's a whole emotional and mental with another host of issues. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when you were saying, I don't like men in tank tops, I was like, I agree. I don't like men in tank tops in, in the, in the way in of the abstract. straight men mm-hmm. in tank tops. Like, I don't like, like just anyone in a tank top. Mm-hmm. But then there are some people who I think look great in them. And I think it is sort of practical. Yeah. You know, no, look, I have seen like you, I've seen the errors of my ways. <laughs> I knew you would. And I don't mean to make you speak for the gay community, Matt, although you seem quite comfortable. But that's why I'm here. No, I am. I I, I assume. Yeah. I assume that responsibility. No, and I love that about you. But but I did hear from a lot of gay men that just said, Danielle, you're wrong. Gay men can wear tanks. And that is just simply was the thought across the board. And you you kind of, I, I think unconsciously, Danielle, you were speaking for straight men. Yes. Yes. I think you were too. That was clear to me. Totally. Okay. And I will say, here's the deal. Yeah. Gay men, little children, and Justin sure. Thoreau can wear tank tops. That's where we Justin go. Thoreau, I disagree. I want the whole shirt off. You want the whole See? shirt off. Yeah, I don't love him in a tank top. Because it's always like a black tank off. top with like a skull and bones and his like big pit bull. That's true. He also wears too many bracelets for me to accept. Sorry. <laughs> he's like he's like a hot topic came yes. to life, but in like a cool mainstream leading man way. And I'm like, I don't get no, this, but I do. It's not even bracelets. It's like cuffs. A lot of cuffs. Yeah. A lot of like, like. It's like a saber tooth tiger necklace. Yeah. Again, people sent me a lot of pictures of him and were like, do you mean Justin Throw? And I'm like, I don't know what I mean anymore, you guys. I'm spun out. It doesn't seem you know what you mean. In, in a way. You know, <laughs> I met him once and he, I'll tell you what he has that Escala doesn't have, that twinkle in his oh, eye. Yeah. He's got that stardom in his eye. Like you meet him and you're like, oh, you're like, you get it. You never, you ever meet like a, you ever see a celebrity in the mm-hmm. wild and you're like, oh, I get it. Oh, yes. And you really kind of didn't before. Yeah. But there's something. He was that. You know, when I was on SNL, everyone's like, you just wait till JT himself comes and hosts Justin Timberlake. And I said to anyone that would listen, it wasn't a lot of people listening to me. But I said, look, he ain't going to get me. Not me. Not me. I won't let him in. I don't want it. I, I'm not interested in it. I don't need it. That might be for you all, but it's it's not going to be for me. Right. Truly one second. I was yeah, like, 100%. oh, my God, how wrong I've been. Much like this Candace comment. It's like, oh, I didn't understand, you know, what I would be confronted with and what I would be unable to be. I was powerless. That yeah. was me. Um, when I ran into Tom Cruise, I have never, and I understand ran this. Ran into Tom Cruise. Yes, guys. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine, Imagine that. that. I was in sort of a secluded place I should not have been. So that's where you run into Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah, you're like <laughs> it was the Scientology tape. Celebrity Center. <laughs> I literally, you snuck into the Celebrity Center for an event. <laughs> I went to Universal. I went to Universal for a pitch, and somehow. We ended up in the wrong elevator that took me to like a secret floor. I'm not even kidding you. Like it was like a secret floor of Universal. I feel Studios. like you know the 13th floor is like an you can't get off on any, and it's just reserved for Tom and his. Yes, that's how it was human it's rights somehow- violation of an organization. But you overlook the Scientology of it all completely when you think about Tom. 
Well, it was, I had never, I was never a big Tom Cruise person. I was never like, oh, Jerry Maguire. So, like, I just never was like, Top Gun, sure, or whatever. But he, I didn't like Who Tom. Cares? I like Goose. Like, these yeah. are where my tastes lie. Okay, guys? Yeah, for sure. A, it's all tracking. Yes. And so we went up the secret elevator. We were just pressing buttons. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We had just had a terrific pitch. We lost our minds. And, and you just press buttons. And we like, just, you like, get excited. Buttons. When you have a good pitch, you get excited. You press buttons. Get me Come out of here. I just did well. Like, and we just got lost. And I can't be here anymore. Yeah. And I went up to the floor. Guys, I'm not even kidding. It was dark. The floor was dark. <laughs> It was the twilight zone. That's where you went. It was so I strange. I did, there was like no lighting. And all of a sudden. You saw Shelly coming out I of us. I saw Shelly Miscavige. <laughs> I walked down a hallway and I saw literally Tom Cruise, my friend and I, in this dark hallway. He glowed in the dark. That's how I know I saw him. He was Oscar. an alien. Yeah. And then yeah. I don't remember anything else. I, I'm not even kidding you. I don't remember anything else. And then my friend who I was with, my writing partner, Donna, said to me, why did you just say hi to Tom Cruise? And I said, I said hi? And she goes, yes, you did. What? Yes. So you blacked out. I blacked out. You had out. a Tom Cruise blackout. And he, did he respond in kind? She said, sure again, no memory of this. She said he smiled. Of course. That nice. million dollar smile, yeah. well, twenty million dollar smile, yeah. really hundred million dollar. Hundred million. I mean, and that's smile. probably that's probably what caused you to black out because, despite ourselves, we all are humans. Yes, except for Tom Cruise. And if we were to <laughs> smile at by Tom Cruise, when he smiles at a human being, I, I think it's sort of like there is a power that he yeah, has. I lost space and time. Paid hundreds of millions of dollars because this is the reaction that people have to him. There's something right. different. And guys, I'm not saying he's a good guy or that he's not involved in a terrible cult. I'm just saying that he has that exactly. thing. He has it. He has that thing. He has what we call that uh, thing a scholar does. <laughs> exactly. As in the industry, that's what we and call And that's how we will separate everyone from now on. Yes. Yeah. And that's really, honestly, can I be real? I am questioning whether Mia has that thing. Oh, I think she has that thing. Nah. You think she has that thing? Because Mm -hmm. because here's what I think. I think I think that Ebony has that thing, but it's not a good mix right now. Like, and I think it's interesting. I think you do need to be helped by your environment. You know what I mean? Like, I think Kathy Hilton obviously has that thing, and she's in the right environment to watch to let it flourish. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think Brashawn has that thing. Yeah, yeah. I do. Come on I like now. Brashawn. I like Brashawn. Guys, I'm into Brashawn. I didn't think there was possibly a path forward for Brashawn after that first episode when she kind of melted down and the rest yeah. of the women were like, we're literally leaving. This person is insane. I did not think there was a path forward. No, it was hard to see. But it. now I guess there is. I she guess because there that, is. she has that thing for housewives. It's a different thing. It has. It's also about the recovery. Well, people yeah. like fine, Rashawn. All right, fine, fine. Okay, even fine. You're like, here. Yes, you're on the yeah. cast. <laughs> no, half of being a housewife is can you recover from the misstep? You know what I'm saying? Right. It was a big challenge. Okay. But she, I thought she made it through. She had her work cut out for her there. I think she has it. I mean, literally, sh- she didn't have a single ally <laughs> after this. Like, it, was, it, was, it was to the point where she had alienated herself from every the crew, goddamn one. Everyone and Salem. <laughs> the crew, uh, the, the entire so city bold. of Salem. The dead ghost witches of Salem were against her. Yeah. Kind of like- Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols wanted to touch her head. He said, I, can, no, I, can't, I can't help this girl. Karen Fisher was like, no, no, no. No, guys, wishful thinking. Guys, that is a bold housewife. That is the energy we need, especially in a city like New York, which is a snooze right now. It's, oh, can I, well, can we, so I guess if we're sort of we're naturally transitioning. transitioning to New no, York. No, I like today's flow, which is like, we're actually intermingling the cities and we're bouncing them off each other because were we to just give airtime to New York, you wouldn't have a ton. So we're having to no. speak about no. it globally. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> no. And here's the deal. People, I, and I, I feel like um, people have been really hard on New York, but here's what I want to say. I felt this week's episode was a return to form because when they were all coming in to sing that verse on the Christmas yes! song, and it was truly <laughs> yeah. one line. It did bring us back to one a bit. I would say that the one of the only times I've roared with laughter <laughs> at this season was watching Leah and Luann 
at each other's throats because Leah wanted a contract a cut, for the charity cut, single. Which she wasn't coming out with that word, a cut. No, she wanted to get paid for it. And it was clearly for charity. And that was from, from go. They knew it was for charity. She wanted to be quote unquote protected legally as if like, there was going to be like headhunters after her. If someone samples the song. <laughs> like she was going to be somehow involved with something nefarious. Meanwhile, yes, it was for money. And when they really went at each other's throats in front, in mixed company, <laughs> and then at the end, and then it all ended with, and what do I want for Christmas? Just you. And they go, <laughs> yay. And the scene ends. <laughs> Literally, the whole thing, the whole argument of, well, I just want to be protected. Like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you you're being defensive? You're being defensive in front of people. And how much is going into charity? And Rihanna wears my designs. And then it ended with, and what do I want for Christmas? Just you. Wow, great. End of scene. <laughs> Literally all for that one thing. And what do I want for Christmas? Oh, oh right. that was beautiful. I screamed. I was like, New York is back. And here's the th- here's the deal. It's like for the past few weeks, people have been like, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. No, they you, they happen to be filming during the election. Like this was a shitty cultural time and we're reliving it. And people are like, you know, like they're blaming Ebony, quote unquote. It's like, no, I think the reason why viewership is down is probably because this is not particularly a time period or discussion that people want to revisit. That we want to watch. Right. No, a pandemic, a really fraught election. And you know what? On Beverly Hills, we're in that same time period, but we're dealing with Erica and Tom. So that is actually superseded the kind they're of not cultural moment we're on in. It. No. Oh, and no, they're not. No, also, no. I will say New York doesn't have enough people. We've said that a, a few million times, times, but there's yeah, not but enough. They don't. 100%. Which might be why you're heartily embracing Bershawn. Yes. I do like her affirmations in the hotel room. I liked seeing that. And I also want to say that two things. One is, at first I was on Leah's side about like i mean first i was on luann's side because i was like this is insane it's a charity organization like why are you making but this we about do know nothing? luann's gonna give one yes. damn dollar to that charity that's but all I, they're that's, getting that's the i thing. don't trust luann and neither should <laughs> leah because we know that she is going to pocket money off of this there is no way she is not and leah is saying i know you i see you and i yeah. know what you're gonna do and if you're gonna do that shit i want me on it so don't fucking Try to think you're going to get one off me saying this is charity because you're going to have it be charity just for the Christmas season or something like that. And then the next year, it's all going in your pocket. I see you. And so, well, you know, afterwards on Watch What Happens Live, they had Luann on. Um, and with, by the way, with the Bachelor's Tyler Cameron, who is so hot, it's crazy. I, I'm not a really a Bachelor Nation person, but I was like, I'm interested in that. And then, so, so they actually, Andy did a poll. Andy had a lot of polls la- uh, on that Watch What Happens, and he was like, was it smart or obnoxious for Leah to ask? about the contract and the audience overwhelmingly was like it was smart and i was kind of surprised that it was such a landslide but then i remembered oh this is an audience that's watched luann for years and so i think what you guys are saying is right we we really do have to ask the question of just because if it's streaming going forward is all that money going to the charity exactly i thought leah was being obnoxious but then i was like maybe she was being smart but leah went about it wrong Totally. Leah should have just been like, knowing your history, I'm worried about all of us. She was just making it about her. It's like, are you okay? Any of us the same way? She And then she tried to make it again, like you said, as though she was worried about the charity suffering or like Luann not being protected. And that's where she no. she, she had the mistake. It's again, it's the dishonesty. No. Come out it from an She's honest saying, angle. You know I would cut off my arm for you, but where's my money? <laughs> yeah, just- oh, everyone. Right. And I would, I would take a bullet for you. None of the... None of these women would protect each other, even if it wasn't about if someone says something shitty about them, everyone throws everyone under the bus. That's what I I love about them. Also, I looked up Billy Stritch because I know we've seen him a bunch. I'm like, this poor man, like gone from Liza to Lou. Like, it's not a great trail. Yeah. And so I looked at every branch on the way down. God, yes, yeah. Here's Burt Backrack. Until the true ground show, Danielle soon. (sighs) God bless. But I did see that he didn't have Lou anywhere on his page. He name dropped every slip. And this has been updated since COVID because he had like this whole COVID section in his page. And it didn't mention Lou once. And you know that's tough for her. Have you guys seen Countess Lou live? No, we haven't. Have you? I did. So I went, it was a couple years ago. Um, I went with a few friends and it was like... <laughs> 
watching a zoo with no enclosure. <laughs> it was like everyone was fully wild and crazy. And she is there. And here's the thing I'll say for Lou. Obviously not a singer. Definitely a cabaret star. She was really? sort of standing there soaking it all in. And I was like, yeah, I get this. And everyone there was so buck wild drunk, myself included. I like fully blacked out. And I asked a question. What so I ask? sort of know. What did you ask? So I sort of know her director be- at the time. Or like when Danielle met Tom like, Cruise, do you not remember what you, you asked? Remember. Oh, okay, you see so I remember this. So basically like I, I, I'm there I, I, and I sort of like, amble over to the mic and i i wave my hand and ben her director i I know and so he he like waved to me and was like yeah yeah yeah, you'll ask a question so he goes he goes to lou oh my god lou you'll never guess who it is it's matt rogers from los culturistas and she goes oh of course of course darling how are you and i go hey lou it's so good to see you and all I could get out, because I hadn't thought about what question I would ask, I was like, what's up with Carol? <laughs> and she just, and, and she she perfectly deadpan, like, like broad comedy just goes, who? Oh! And the whole crowd, the whole crowd just loses it. Beautiful. The were prepping her like fucking Joe Biden got prepped to take on Trump. They're like, we're going to give you a better team than Biden. She's a way better team than Biden. And we're going to give you, because you asked something beautiful and it was four words. Simply, what's what's up with Carol? What's up with Carol? Who? (laughs) Audience roars. Yes. It was Nichols and May. You know what oh. I mean? It was we we obviously are Mike Nichols had tapped both of our foreheads <laughs> in that moment. We were yes, ready and primed yes. for the moment. Can I also Beautiful. say though, when she revealed that piano, mm. I would I've never felt so sorry for a musical instrument in my life. I literally like <laughs> a morph what is that called? A- 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 promor- I'm gonna say Anthropomorph- an- Anthropomorphify. Yes, <laughs> anthropomorphify. Anthropomorphify. Uh-huh. It because you I was like, this poor piano like what yeah. a terrible singer that this piano has to deal with and i literally thought my a friend of mine used to make a joke about another friend and i thought that this uh th- th- they used to say it sounds like the piano and this person are fighting and the piano is winning <laughs> and yeah. i was like in a fight to the death the for piano. us the piano audience is not putting lou on its resume no mm-hmm. i was like i will say though you hear you you do when you see her in concert and you hear the songs and you do scream at the beginning like it's like bon jovi playing living on a prayer it's like <laughs> she starts to play Sheik say la vie and you're like <laughs> and you're, you're, you really are you're just like you're okay, losing your shit <laughs> Also, I will say this. I will say this. When I saw that show, I happened to be sitting a couple seats over from Molly Shannon, who is like a huge like Housewives fan. Yep. And she goes to me, she taps me on the shoulder and she goes, that was a really good question. <laughs> God bless. And wow, then she, man. she, I, I saw her like, a, like literally a, a year and a half later because we're both on this the Vanessa Bayer the Showtime show that she's doing. By the yes, way. congrats! Thank you, thank you so much. And I said to her, I was like, "You'll never remember this, but we met at the Countess Luann and Friends show." And she goes, "Oh my God, I remember you asked that really good question." Ah! And I was like, I literally said, what's up what's with up Carol? With Carol? <laughs> it's a great question. Great. Well, I great rolled. Question. I couldn't believe it. Great it's the right question, question I mean, for the right person in the right venue. And that's all we can hope for. I just, it was so Beautiful. funny, the whole thing. And I'm telling you, the women were wild. Matt, I have had a flash. And this is truly not to be like unduly flattering, but I'm seeing this as something that's just like a natural progression. And and I hope if, uh-huh. if Andy's listening, which which he often does, or 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 friends of his listen, and I hope this doesn't get back to him in any a negative way. Because I don't uh-huh. mean this in a negative way. I mean, okay. we don't know where the road takes us all career wise. And maybe Andy moves on to be M- Mike Nichols. You know, we don't know. Are you gonna say what I think you're gonna say? This is psycho. I do think in talking to you, and not just because of your one question with Carol, what which was with, a with, fantastic, what's up with Carol? which we can all agree was an amazing, amazing question. question. <laughs> amazing. No one will take that from me. No one will take that from me. Even though at first no. I didn't think it was. And you know what? It's so simple. It's not even, a, it's a half a question, but still brilliant. That's right. <laughs> what's up with Carol? <laughs> Can you should? By make, the way, it, at the time I asked it, it was like a year past the expiration yeah, date. And can time. I ask you, please, for your La Culturistas podcast, if you could make T-shirts that just say "What's up with, what's Carol? Up with Carol?" Yeah, 
Merch that I did on uh, for a thing I did on this show for that show. And I, like Leah, will ask you, "Where's my cut?" Because where's my cut? Yeah. Of course, but this what's I up with saying Kara? that is is should Andy ever on his own terms, of course, never you know pushed out by fans because he can do that till the day he passes. Or, or which knock on wood, I do think should the reins be turned over, you would be incredible at that job. This is what I would say. It actually is my dream job. And in a way that I think Andy should be flattered by, because I actually love him so much. Well, it's because he's set the, set the bar and the template and shown us what we could do and be. Right, right. And I would say, like, he, I, I have so much love and respect for him. I love that man so much. I love that he brings so much fun and, like, like energy to yes. that to that position and i think he's also doing so much because not only does he have to like curate these shows and produce the shows but he also has to like make that show fun every night and you know sometimes he gets some rough guess yeah he also has to field fucking texts and calls from those goddamn housewives day and night that's a whole yeah. job unto itself and watch cuts of the show like he's dealing with raw footage like he's uh, he's dealing with with just things we don't even know about and housewives would be enough, but he's got to watch all the below decks. I mean, like all the summer houses. Mary de I mean, like, you guys know all these things. Kardashians he's cramming on on two weeks' notice. If Andy put his hand on my <laughs> head, I would cry. If he just put yeah. his hand right there, I would. It's cry. my dream to just be on Watch What Happens Live. Like both both my best friends. So my best friends are Bo and Yang and Joel Kim Booster, and they were both <laughs> on. And they so that when Joel was on, he was on with Kenya Moore. And when Bowen was on, he was on with Monique Samuels during the big, like, well, it was her Watch What Happens Live appearance during all that. And so I'm like, I feel like I have to go. And I really, if I ever get on, I would like to be with an iconic housewife. I don't want to be on with, like, anyone that's not. Not that I can do so much, but I am going to put in an email for you because I you you belong on there. It's already happened. It's one of those things, you know what I mean? Like, we're already. I know it's my destiny. It, it is your destiny, and it's our destiny to watch it. It's yeah. already. I, I think. I think he and I will click. I can't I really believe do. you I, haven't I hope already. Like, I know. Like it does feel strange. Yeah. Well, I, it's all. It's only now in my. This is obnoxious, but it's only now in my like career, I guess, that I'm having things to like promote. Like I have like an animated show on Netflix coming out, and then the Showtime show next year. So it's like things are starting to happen where I'm like positioning myself to be on Watch What Happens Live, and then I can die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe. I don't need to have career success. No. I need to be on Watch What Happens Live once. Then we're good. Yeah. Then we are good. Yeah. It's all down. It will be downhill from there. Just eff- like, I just, a- it's your Olympics and just like the Olympic athletes sort of like are depressed when the training is over. Right. You've been training your whole life for this. And now when it's over, that. Without question. And it's just like, I just hope that when I do eventually get on there, it's not like the stretching off season Dallas thing. Cause, mm. cause we can, we can definitely go hard in the paint for, for Dallas. I mean, sometimes they do offer some good stuff, but like, it's whenever there's like a golden age it's like god you got to get it okay let me give you one suggestion sometimes they'll be like can you do this date and they'll be like this is a below deck night and i will say oh my god i can't because you want to set yourself up to succeed and don't get worried that they won't ask for another date that's a power move though you're casey rose wilson you can you can you can be like no i i matt rogers at being asked on my first time i think you can ask if there's various times i think you could be like oh my god i'm so sorry I, i'm supposed to shoot that night but i do i will get out of it i will be there but what about yeah is there any other day but i also you could position yourself to be like i'm such a housewives fan that you should have beyond where there's a housewife so i can really fawn over this person like you could also say like it's in your best interest to have me on during this 100 percent. i want to be on there when they have jen shaw wow <laughs> that's a get that's a get. See, that's I want to be on there when they have like one of the Salt Lake housewives when we have it again. Uh, and I can I say I fucking love Salt Lake. Oh, oh, and, 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 oh my god, Salt Lake was so good. Look at I'm like literally energized yes. now thinking about what the second season of Salt Lake would be. I would be on with any of them. I'd be on with Lisa Barlow, who I'm I I ride for Lisa Barlow. Wow. I would be on with Meredith Marks. I bought the Brooks Marks tracksuit. I like I said, I'm down to buy the products and when i saw brooks marks had a track suit I, w- I couldn't get online fast enough do you like the I did quality fo- it's terrible i'm concerned about washing it 
because it's like sort of weird. It's like hand washing. No, can I tell you what it felt like to me as I wore it? I felt it was like an old navy. Now, here's the thing about old navy, which I yeah. buy my child and myself things from it. Old Navy looks great. One wash, it feels like cardboard. And, and I that, feel the same counterintuitively right. about Madewell. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about like places you go buy things because they're not of the way pieces. that they're made. They're not. For good. I did a photo shoot in the in the Brooks Marks tracksuit. You look gorgeous. So you look gorgeous. this is, I sort of just like gave you the same pose like again and again. Yeah, yeah. you got down on the ground. I got down on the ground. I sort of bit my thumb. You know what I mean? I like the lots on hands and pockets. Oof. There we go. And I, it's, it's all really the same. It's that Beautiful. sort of like a I'm a bro pose. And then I actually changed my hat just to sort of like shake it up. I wore a blue oh, you hat. you put your hat backwards. And a yes. One. You know yeah. what? The photo yeah. shoot is very Chet Hanks. Very Chet Hanks. And that actually wasn't what I was going for. But to know I achieved that is huge. <laughs> and I will say, I think I think the fact that I gave Chet Hanks might be why Brooks Marks got in my DMs about it. Whoa! Huge! Wow, he got his chat vibes, and he said, "I gotta get my fingers a scamper in and and get to you." He got in my DMs, and he goes, "Thank you so much for the support. No one realizes how hard it is to do this. No and I one, was like not one person. Sorry, I don't think it was hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." I'm only not saying anything because I'm strangling myself. Never seen uh, someone more privileged and set up to succeed than that. No one has been more set up to succeed for one sweatsuit. One sweatsuit. I like FaceTimed Bowen when I was wearing it. And he was like, "Ugh, no. He was like, you shouldn't have done that. He was like actually angry with me in like a capitalist sense. He was like, this is not where you should put your money. (laughs) And I was like, well, uh, I don't know. My instinct first and foremost is to support housewives products and i do consider because without this. you they have nothing without all of us without the three of us we are half of their budget but they are doing a lot for us truly yeah and so when when i a loyal consumer <laughs> log on and i google wendy osefo candle and i there's not only is there no website to buy them but there's not only one article about oh, it dare. i was like and that's vultures recap Zen when Zen, Zen when. when that I don't like when they all go Zen too. Like it was a mistake with um, what's her name on Dallas, Leanne. Like this, I'm just like Ooh. be yourself. The Deandra, like uh, the shaman of it all. <sighs> yeah, that was that was it. I did like that. That I, shaman I like though was a real that. Ch- that hairdresser shaman, the worst hair wonderful. and the worst shaman. I love him. Like he's a boxing coach, a, a cast member. I hate him. I love him. guys, I, Martin. I, Martin has too. got to go. That marble mouth fucking, I can't with They're Martin, like, It's guys. a pandemic. What are a couple like sets we can just keep returning to? I hate Martin. The shaman set. And yeah. the boxing ring is where no. we've like. No. They love that boxing ring. It. Yeah, he, I, I, honestly, he's a little too much for me. But I, I like that he is getting Sonia. I, his interactions with Sonia, I'm like, I this feels like, like a cartoon, it. first of all. <laughs> like her, her pigtails like, well, that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> you know? like, you, you're too good for that. You gotta make sure that no one is abusing you. I'm like, I cannot. This, it's like the <laughs> that marble goddamn, mouth. I just can't, guys. Also, it's it's sort of like um, it's like a weird like um. Remember on Mister Rogers, like when they would sort of some uh, the, all the different characters would like talk to the train. It's like they all have a different relationship with Martin. It's just like, oh hey Martin. It's like what's going on? You know what I mean? He's like a character in the world that's just like they all have a relationship somehow, except Ramona and Luann. Because why would they ever go to that box? Like, that's Leah's boxing this boxing instructor, and then someone was like, should we just use him? Because we're testing should him. We just we're, go? We're COVID testing him, like. Yeah, he's just a he's what we call in the sitcom world is a go to. And I just can't with this go to getting us informationally from scene to scene. Yeah, just he's just a person. They could be. I'd rather them just talk to what, themselves in the mirror. I appreciate yeah. that so much. Or like much when they more. talk to their dogs when they're packing. Yes, happy to talk to a, a dog while packing. Fine with that. I love that. The, the producers must just be like, okay, Harry Hamlin won't sit there while you're packing. Fine. Who else will? She's like definitely not Delilah and the other one, and they're like, fine. No, talk to that dog. Now, yeah. I have a question. Speaking of Beverly Hills, because there's no new Please. shows this week, but I do want to ask you me. where you're at with both the Erica, Girardi, right. Jane of it all, and also the Crystal and Sutton of it all are two biggest controversies. One thing before you start mad is like you know we've gotten a lot of feedback that Erica we were a little went too easy on her about tonally you know and her friends doing us kind of a 
curated thing about it's expensive to be me. And certainly her online presence is quite disturbing. Um, yeah. I did see a photo of her in Daily Mail yesterday in a Versace robe going to her front gate and picking up a Lucifer's pizza box and a liter of pure regular Coke. Oh, I respect that. Oh, no. It's so hard watching her crouch. <laughs> oh, no. So, I was Wait. like, I don't know that I've seen something that starts in a long time. I was just about to be like, well, after watching the documentary, I have to come around and say that I do think she bears some responsibility for this. But then hearing that she crouched down for Lucifer's in a regular <laughs> Coke, my heart is rebroken for her. And I'm like, I don't know. And the leader of Coke was so The leader. Sad. The leader. Not even like a, you know, uh, what do you call no, it? Uh, she's drinking that right from the bottle. She ain't pouring it in the No cup. ice. She can't afford it. Nope. She's like, I'm going to make this, this spread out. I'm going to make this Coke glass. Yeah, let me straighten my tie before I say this. Um, so basically, um, with Erica Jane, I, I have been pretty much on her side until this last episode when I felt it felt false to me for the first time. When she sat down and was like talking about the car accident and the broken ankle and the the seemingly twelve hours in the in numerous the- <laughs> yeah numerous revelations that. I think we live in such a sensitive media time right now that we would have heard something about some of this stuff. Mm. So it starts to feel a little weird to me. That being said, I don't think she's capable of acting uh, well enough for those emotions to have been (laughs) fake, like her crying during the Kyle conversation. But I also do believe after watching the documentary that she is um, making a big mistake, at least in terms of optics, of not thinking about the people who have really been victimized by what Tom did, because she is not one of them. And when you do watch the documentary, which, by the way, is brutal and horrible, and the way that Danielle Staub came out first <laughs> and sauntered over to the chair like she was some credible witness. And in that's the cold how open, we call it. it. Yeah. In the, the cold log. open. But it takes a 180 in such an extreme way. <laughs> It's not a good documentary. And I also was like, Sonny Hostin, what are you doing on this? This makes you look so bad. I was like, I I really didn't like that she did that as a a fan of The View. Um, uh, But I was just like, when you hear from the victims and you hear just how much they suffered and just how shitty this guy was. And how he strung them along. It does feel. It does feel. He was a pathological liar in it huge you know i mean he's path he's pathological he's maybe a, even a sociopath okay but to what do you say and i love to use this employ the andy technique of like now what do, this is just, these are thought theories i'm what do you say to those that would say to you like we see how terrible tom was to the victims was he not abusing erica in the same way i think that i their relationship obviously was not great and i feel badly for her that she had a difficult marriage but i also think you know i think two things can be true i think like she cannot have known everything and i also think it's up it, it's her responsibility now to get as much of that money back as possible to the people who need it totally and tonally she is in control tonally how she is you know, moving forward right now. Yeah, right now she can only see herself. And I think that that's obviously revealing of a a, a major character flaw. Do I think she is a criminal and should go to prison? I do not believe so. No, I don't think so. But do I think that she doesn't look good out of all this? I don't think so. Because if you bear a responsibility, like she used all that money, I don't know. I don't know. But she, I don't think she knew it was coming. I think the money truck poured out money for 20 years why wouldn't it still be pouring my personal thing she never asked why would she start but the thing that the documentary sort of exposed that i was sort of like yeah honestly that is a big question and if this is her life every single day you do ask these questions your husband is a class action lawyer how does it make sense that you have that much money well when you think though that like he was there was a basis of him and aaron brockovich and that's a windfall like his job is to get windfalls for victims that deserve it so i could see in her mind she's just like you know like i don't know how much money lawyers make i don't know i think that one of the things about erica that i love is that she's so much smarter than you think and i think that i've always loved her because like i think when you look at her on face value and this is why i felt a little bit bad for her when the news started breaking is because they were like looking at her like this like dumb Barbie who like was like this like dumb like you know I think they tried to frame her as like an Anna Nicole Smith type that was like a gold digger or whatever in the media and I was like yeah but if you watch the show you know that she is like shrewd and 
often like um you know a fun personality to watch and and i do believe in some way like a, a an on stage talent like in some fashion <laughs> specific so ways. and i feel like that was all getting erased but then it's just like revealing that i think that she doesn't really have a consideration for other people and she has this like shark like mentality yes. of like i'm going to make it and um when i lose it all it's about me that's what's coming out now it feels and i know we haven't heard her like full story as she puts it but to me the timeline is just so confusing and troubling like i really would like to get some note cards up and some pins on a yeah. board <laughs> and some string and some photos and just generally yeah. i'm not being funny like just understand it a bit better because I'm very confused yeah. on some dates and the timeline and why she's defending Tom and, and being like, I'm so worried he has dementia. That feels self-serving. And also the dementia thing is not serving either of them because he might be having dementia now. But this has been going on a long fucking time. When you hear those phone calls to those people, it's like, I'm going to get you your money, blah, blah, blah. He knows what he's doing at that moment. Yeah. Totally. Also, like by her pushing a dementia narrative for him, I think that she might think that she's helping them both. But actually, all that does is turn everyone's eyes to her, because if we can't get answers from him yes. because you're saying he's, he's unable hook. to provide those answers, then you're the one that we're going to look at. And as we saw in that shitty documentary, um, her name is on a lot of it. I mean, her name is on a lot of the papers. Like, And that's why she might go to jail. Really? It's hard. I think the dementia thing, she thinks in her head, it's going to make her look like, even though Tom screwed me over, I'm still a good person because I care about him as like a human on a cellular level, but it, you're right, it, it's backfiring. Yeah. And then she's like, but I'll, I'll still say some bad stuff about him to make it all work. Like, I'll just still throw out that he cheated and this and that. Like, it's very, it's a scrambled eggs. It's a, it's a mess. It's tossed salad and scrambled eggs as, uh, you know, the Frasier theme song taught us. And her narrative, it, it doesn't entirely, I don't, I just don't think it's smart. And then the more I'm watching the show and the more I'm hearing about what the deal is, I'm like, I actually can't believe that she is bold enough to get on this reality show and say all this stuff because it's incriminating. But I wonder if she needs a reality show for money. Like she needs, that's the problem. It's this double-edged sword mm. because she needs for her brand to continue because after this, she's going to have nothing. So she does need to pocket something to just live her life. You know what I mean? So she needs this show. Do you think they'll have her back next season? Yeah, I think they want I think they want her while, because this is a storyline. I think we'll see what yeah, pans out. I agree with you. I think if it's really bad, they're going to have to like, separate themselves from it. But anyway, and what was what was the second Beverly Hills question? I just, where are you on Sutton and Crystal? I'm a Sutton. I really, I, I really, I, I, I really like Sutton. I can't take credit for that. There was someone who called in to watch What Happens Live and said, hey girl, I'm a Sutton. And they all stopped and laughed about that I for a minute. That. And I was like, I love that. So credit due to that person that called in on Watch What Happens Live. Whoever you are, God You're bless you. I don't know one on this show because we're always like, that person that said that. I'm a Sutton, but I will say, I, I thought the Crystal Sutton narrative was a weird one because I was with Crystal immediately when Sutton was like, I don't want to discuss race. That's what we're not going to do. I was just like, Southern women are not racist. And we've had to carry that burden for years. When I thought Crystal was giving her way too much when she was like, no, I understand. Like y your type of person does have stereotypes, of course. And then almost like allowing her to think they were on equal footing at all. Like she's an Asian woman, like in the year of our Lord, 2021, God knows she's been through some shit and she should not even make Sutton think they live in equal existence. But she was being respectful and polite, I think. So with that whole situation, I was like, I'll never be Team Sutton on this, despite the fact that I do appreciate like what she is and how she exists in the world. And her Yes, I'm starting to appreciate more of who she is for us as a housewife and the care and what she's bringing. She dresses us. like a fake Christmas tree, like a fun <laughs> Christmas tree. You get to be different this year. I feel like we're not saying enough how badly she's horrible. I feel like it's not being said enough. Like I feel like we're just kind of accepting like she's got money and she's in this like but the fashion, yet what we're seeing with our eyes tells me quite a different story. It, it really is money can't buy you class. 100%. I think that she is a fashion girl and I think she likes fashion. But unfortunately, I don't think the fashion that she likes looks good on her. So I think that she is wow. not... 
So she likes fashion, but fashion doesn't exactly. like her. It's like all the all her outfits mm. are sort of wearing her, which is really the what you don't want. Mm. It's like the piano in Lou. In yeah. general, like <laughs> I like that about her. Like I like for me as a viewer that she doesn't look good. And ultimately, like with Crystal and Sutton, I was a hundred percent team Crystal until I feel like Crystal was sort of framing that that. We took she it took a it a little far. far with the word violate. And I like that she was unapologetic about using that word. But oh, I loved it. I looking, love it. Yeah, she didn't back down, which is really the only option. No, and I had. loved the culmination and the fight at Lisa Rinna's uh, Har- Harry Bolognese mm, party at Garcelle's birthday. I love referring <laughs> to it as Lisa Rinna's Harry Hamlin Bolognese party for Garcelle's birthday. That to me is <laughs> it was be- <laughs> well, chef's kiss. Who is hung featuring? Who is hunky boy? We had everything we wanted. We had everything we needed there. Ending in the leather mm. pants, loved it. Like peak housewives. And then I do believe after that, Crystal will look back on it and be like, "Yeah, I didn't play that exactly right." But ultimately, I think they're both winners from it. Beautiful, wow. Matt. You know, I just got a call from someone I work with, and they're like, "Hey, I don't think you need to do this." You know, if you're if you're busy, but like the New York Times, they're doing a little piece on Kathy Hilton. Like, I, I I'm I'm we're just probably gonna pass. I said, "How fucking no?" I'd like dare to be involved. You. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I consider myself humbly to be one of the authorities on Kathy Hilton, and I will be speaking on her behalf. Thank you. Yeah. In the old gray lady, I will put my words on record. Yeah. Yeah. She's a gift. She is a. She's a gift and a star yeah. that we didn't. I mean, we've all said it, but we didn't know we needed. We didn't know we had her. She's been hiding her light under a bushel all these years. Finally, le- like roaming free. She's a bigger star than Nikki and Paris together. I'm so glad we've learned what we were learning about Paris. Bigger. We're getting. Uh, it just feels so good. It feels like a release that like we've taken our spanks off. And now we're like, oh, we're free and i feel like you know what's the best part of it all is the other night my my friend patrick is is watching housewives from the beginning of of beverly hills and he just got to thank you patrick and so so yeah and it's so it you know what we were in palm springs hungover and i turned on the first episode we were sharing a room and i turned on the first episode of beverly hills and he laid eyes on kathy hilton and was like what's this show i have to watch it and he's obsessed and so i converted someone so Kathy Hilton is causing people to work backwards. Similarly with my friend Carolina, shout out, starting New York from the beginning, starting Beverly Hills from the beginning, beginning. And these these are, I love this. You're not just trying to like join us now and say you've been with us. You want the history and you're going to take no. your time to learn the history. You want the text. And he's also watching New York from the beginning. But he's now at the Amsterdam wow. part and there's the part where like Kim is obviously like being so crazy at that dinner with Lisa Rinna where she throws the glass. And at one point, Kim turns to Kyle and she says, Kathy would never do this. She would be in my corner like a real sister. And when you imagine how many times they've talked about Kathy Hilton and how many times they've referenced her, and then we see her this season and we get to know her and we realize that she's a woman wearing a t-shirt that says girls can do anything, <laughs> drinking a Red Bull at 1.30 in the morning, howling at her own dog, asking who is Hunky Dory. The fact that they ever lifted her up in our eyes, the viewers, as an authority figure and as like the model sister is so funny and illuminating. I can't believe this is who they've been talking about. She can't spell her own name. And I love it. Hating Kyle to even give that energy to anything. It's. It is like she's so daffy. Kathy Hilton. You know what I mean? She's such. Utter perfection. She, I just see her tottering around her garden in oh. slippers. You know what I mean? Just talking, talking to no one. Like a gardener is there, but maybe he's not. You know what I mean? Like just talking at people. It's the graphic tease yep. for me. The ones that say girls can do anything. Kindness, kindness first. first. She's I kindness. Love. Like I, I just like. She's never dressed up. Never in a, never in like hair and makeup. I mean. But she's like, I feel these statements. Let me wear them. She thinks that these are important things to project. On her platform. She's like, everyone has a sphere of influence. She goes, I don't know what the platform is. I don't know what network it's on. But I know that people can benefit from the message girls can do. It's so cute. But it's so off, like in a great way. The opposite way that Melania's be best campaign which to me and no one's talking about enough <laughs> about that slogan we we brushed by it the same way she we does. did michael douglas getting throat cancer from eating women out there are just some cultural touchstones that we didn't spend enough time on no you're right you're right you're right no we didn't have time to spend there was too much going on we didn't have time to spend on this i've been eating too many women out and i love my family and we just were like great thank you for that you guys if your spouse went to the media 
and said, I have cancer in my throat <laughs> because I ate too much dick yeah. or penis. How would you go back to that marriage? How, How would you, you go you back out into the world? Just lay your head next I, to that. Just knowing that that's, I, well, I, I feel like, I don't know. Saying to I the don't world. know the answer. I just. And I still love him and would offer up my own. Only to riddle him further. My wife's vagina is radioactive, basically. And to know that his wife is Catherine Zeta is, I love. No, I know, I know. I, see, I never blame Catherine. It, it was a cumulative thing. It was Michael Douglas had eaten so much pussy over time that he was just like, eventually I get to the place where, of course, your throat's right. going to be fucked off. Trust me, after all the conolingus I've done in my Hollywood career, I'm a Douglas. I'm the son of Kirk Douglas. <laughs> I'm munching it. It's like one cigarette is gonna isn't gonna kill you, but millions of cigarettes You're gonna, it's gonna, it's kill, gonna you. kill you. <laughs> it's everything. It was a brag. It really was. It was just like, and obviously, you know, I, I hope he's doing well on the cancer front. And yes. you guys, with anything, moderation. Yeah, that's right. You know, if you're gonna eat puss, moderation. But I don't know. Maybe Catherine Zeta appreciates this sort of um, commitment. <laughs> In some way, it makes me horny. I'm like, wow, like you got cancer from me. Especially when like, you think about young Michael Douglas, he was hot. Like Michael Douglas and like uh, Fatal Attraction and like um, way back in the day, like he oh, could absolutely. Romancing the Stone. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oof. Uh, War of the Roses, underrated, one of oh, the great yeah, movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, anything, anything from that period. Beautiful. He was, he, he was hot. You know, Matt Rogers, we have to wrap up. Uh, it's so heartbreaking. And I'm so sad to do so because I, I really feel we only scratched the surface. We, I mean, truly. I mean, for there to be no new Beverly Hills this week really broke my heart. But I feel like we touched on it in a way that is good. No, when I saw that email go out that was like, we just have to tell Matt, you know, there's only two. Oof. I felt sad, you know, but I feel yeah. like this can be like your watch what happens. Like, this is training. It's like you don't have a ton to work with, but you're going to hit. A Listen, I, I, this is th this was a highlight of probably my whole year. Oh, wow. I'm going to say. Wow. Wow. You guys are like the, truly <laughs> the the icons of Housewives discourse. And so to be able to be given the opportunity wow, to be you. here is something that I do not take lightly or for granted. OK. And just understand that. And you didn't. You really no. you came to play. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope we didn't disappoint because you were a great guest. No, this was this was like I said, a highlight of uh, let's say my life. Um, but you can listen to Las Culturistas oh. with me and Bo and Yang. Uh, we release it's every so epi funny. every episode comes out on Wednesday. Uh, our new episodes come out on Wednesday. Oh, so you have a certain date you release your yes. podcast <laughs> novel. <laughs> we we st we st we're pretty we scatter shot over here. <laughs> struggle oh, with yeah. That. I mean, well, you guys. It doesn't really matter. They'll come regardless of when it is. So that's just like the power that that has. If you build tomorrow. it, if you build it. Um, I also host um this uh podcast called HBO Max Movie Club, which is. I just talk about and shoot the shit about movies on the HBO Max platform that comes out every two weeks on Mondays. Is this sponsored by HBO Max? Um, it is sponsored by HBO Max. I love it. Do you have a way to get us onto White Lotus? <laughs> um, I will say, wow, we didn't even get to talk about that. My obsession, but um, I, I will. I'm gonna. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my own safety mask on and get myself on White Lotus first before I can help you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I heard there oh, is a second cute. season right. coming, so that's some tea. <gasps> I, I could not possibly this confirm or deny. I don't want to know, but are the same people back at the resort? Maybe this is opening up a new cast of characters. I don't know, but like, I'm there. Okay. I'm there because I'm okay. fully I'm there. obsessed. And you're going to be starring in Vanessa Bayer's new show, which is coming out soon, which is, is run by one of my best friends of all time, Jesse Klein. And She's such a genius. I, I mean, I can't believe... Paul James, who has been a guest a million times with us and a dear friend, is also Paul's on there. Paul's incredible. I saw him at the gym the other day. He's so fucking hot. Oh, he's oh, so God. hot. But Molly Shannon is on it. Like Vanessa Bayer, obviously. When you see Vanessa in this show, you're going to fucking die. She's so... She's the best. Oh, we love Vanessa God. so much. She's so funny. Her her impressions aren't impressions. She channels. Did you see her Lisa Barlow on Watch What Happens Live? Oh, my oh, God. I texted her. I was like, this was a tour de force. Tour de force. No, she, it's... I want her to get Emmys for those appearances on Watch What Happens Live. Like, can she get an, an Emmy for a talk show appearance? Is that possible? We need to campaign for the category to be created so that we can... Campaign. I would like that. Yeah, like Melissa Leo. Just like, why can't consider. we ask you? Consider. 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 Guys, Matt Rogers, where can we find you on social media? It's at Matt Rogers, though, on Instagram. I am no longer on Twitter because they kicked me off. And I will. I don't know why there was like some problem with it. But I will say my last tweet ever was the quote. There's something magical.